Hi, this is Lou. Welcome to my channel. And today I'm going to be sharing how I've been drawing Celtic knots in a circle. So to start with, I draw a circle. And then I need to divide my circle up into sections. I'm going to do that using my compasses. And I'm going to divide it into 24. I'm going to keep my compasses the same width as the radius of the circle. Just put the point down at some point on the uh, circumference and make two little tick marks around the circle. Move the point of the compass to one of the marks that you've made and then make another one. Keep going round until you've filled the circle. That'll divide your circle into six. Now you can join the two points on the circumference of the circle through the centre. Do that three times and you've got six sections. To divide the six into twelve, change the width of your compasses so it's just over half uh, the width of one of those segments. Put the point on the edge of the circle where one of your marks is and then make a little arc Make sure it does go past where you think the halfway point is. Then when you move your compasses to the next point and make your second arc, you'll find a point where they cross over. And that's the halfway point of that segment. Carry on around the circle until you've got those crossover points in every segment. And then again, use your ruler and join them together, making sure they go through the centre. To divide your circle from 12 to 24, you do exactly the same process again. Change the width of your compasses to just over the halfway point of your new segment and carry on around the circle 12 times this time, making little crosses. Again, use the ruler to join them up through the centre of the circle. And you've now divided your circle into 24. In order to create Celtic knots in this circle, you need to create something that's kind of a bit like a grid, with approximately square chunks in it. So you'll need to draw some concentric circles. You can just estimate the size of these, but I decided to try and create some way of measuring them. So I've set my compasses to the width of the segment and then done that trick again of marking a little arc but going inside the circle this time rather than outside. Do that on just two points and you get the little cross where the arcs cross over and I can use that as the width of my circle. If I follow this process through, for every concentric circle that I draw I'll create a little block that just gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller as it gets in towards the centre of the circle. You can decide on how many circles you want to draw. Two makes a really simple woven braid. Three makes a slightly more complex pattern. And for this one, I'm going for four. Now at every point where a line crosses a circle, I need to draw an intersection point for my kind of woven lines. Now you can choose to make these all the same size. But because each kind of strand of the woven piece uh, is going from the inside of the circle to the outside, if you make them all the same size, then your strands in the centre of the circle will be narrow and then the ones at the outside of the circle will be wide. To counter that, you can make the spaces in between different sizes. And that's what I'm doing here. I use a little diamond on the crosses and a triangle at the edge where I want my pattern to loop around back in. I need a diamond or a triangle on every intersection point and then when I've finished those I put an extra diamond in the centre of every little segment. And you'll see that at the centre of the circle the little triangles are quite small and then at the outside they're quite big. And I try and kind of grade them as they go up so that the gaps in between the little triangles are about the same from the inside to the outside of the circle. Once 
Once I've done one section and I'm happy with the relative sizes, I then go on and fill in these little diamonds all the way around the circle. So now you should have a little pattern of diamonds and triangles. And what you want to do is to diagonally join the corners of the diamonds together. So in the outside row, I'm joining them diagonally in one direction. And then I'll move down to the next row and join them diagonally in the other direction too. It doesn't matter at this point if they're a little bit wonky, we'll fix that later. And again, I'll carry that pattern on all the way around the circle. So this is the basic framework for our Celtic knot. And you can see that in some places, uh, my lines are a little bit skew with, a little bit dog-legged, but that's okay. When I add my pen lines, I'm gonna be really careful and just try and smooth some of those lines out. If you want to do that part with a pencil first, then that's absolutely fine. But I'm gonna go straight in with the pen at this point. Sometimes you might need to deviate a little bit from the pencil line to get a really nice effect. I'm going to work around the outside of the circle, doing one section at a time, and then I'll do the next row and the next row and the next row. When I come to put in my second and third rows, and as I keep working through the pattern, what I like to do is to look at where the woven strand would be coming from and try and make sure that I don't have any weird angly bits that don't look right. So I can use my pen, hover above the paper and follow through those lines, trying to make it look right. So where a strand goes under another strand, it comes up at the right place. And again, sometimes you might need to deviate from your pencil line to achieve that effect. So that's this woven circle completed. And you can decide how and if you want to decorate it. I'm gonna rub away my pencil lines, maybe color in the intersections and uh, add a little bit of decorative line work. I want to show you a slightly different version of this pattern too. So this one here I've done using three concentric circles and I divided my page this time using a protractor rather than uh, the method I showed you before. So the protractor uh, marks off the degrees of a circle. So if I put a point every 10 degrees, I should be able to divide my circle up into uh, 36 sections. This time I didn't measure the size of my concentric circles. I just estimated what looked right. Dividing it into 36 sections means that every little chunk that I'm drawing is slightly smaller than the, uh, the previous pattern. And so the differences between the thickness of the woven strands on the outside and the inside is lessened. So for this one, I decide to use little diamonds and triangles that are all roughly the same size, rather than scaling them up and down around the ring. For added interest, I also added some break lines into this pattern. Those are horizontal and vertical lines that join two of the diamond edges together. You can choose where you place these and you get different types of pattern variations depending on where you place your little lines. I've got more information about break lines and how to use them in my other Celtic Knot video. And so I'll put a link down in the description box to that one. But it's basically where you meet one, you don't do the woven pattern you just allow the line to loop back on itself.
again, my guidelines for this end up being quite blocky. And so when I go in with the pen, I really try to create some nice rounded shapes and to keep the width of the strands even throughout the pattern. So thanks very much for watching today. I really hope you found this helpful. I would love to see your Celtic knot rings if you'd like to share them with me. Uh, if you post them to Instagram, tag them with Lou Davis Art. That's the account where I'm posting this kind of thing. So thanks again, happy drawing, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.